Today is Wednesday, May 20th, 2020. I will call to order the Board of the County Commissioner's meeting. Roll call, please. Commissioner Stallmeyer? Present. Commissioner Mauer? Present. Chair Waymeyer? Present. Commissioner Dickinson? Present. Commissioner Dunn? Present. All right, if you join me for our ever awkward Pledge of Allegiance, followed by our invocation. I pledge allegiance to the flag, the flag of the United States, United States, States of America, America and, the Republic, and to the Republic in which it stands, one nation, one nation under God, God indivisible, indivisible, with liberty, liberty and justice for all. All right. I don't think he is. This is Pastor Todd Miller, are you on? All right, I am. All right. Like you know what? I'm going to just share some. Uh, this is Commissioner Dickinson. I'm going to share some verses from Philippians 4, um, starting with verse 4 to verse 9. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice and the God of peace will be with you. And I think those are great words for the day that we are living in now amen all right thank you yep. <clears throat> all right that brings us to correspondence and organizational business today we are considering a proclamation for emergency medical services week i'll read the proclamation that we will be considering it reads whereas emergency medical services is a vital public service and whereas the members of Franklin County EMS and other emergency medical services teams are ready to provide life-saving care to those in need 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And whereas access to quality emergency care dramatically improves the survival and recovery rate of those who experience sudden illness or injury. And whereas the emergency medical services system in Franklin County consists of emergency medical dispatchers, first responders, emergency medical technicians, paramedics, and whereas the members of these emergency medical teams engage in multiple hours of specialized training and continued education to enhance the skills necessary to care for the ill and injured. And whereas it is appropriate to recognize the values and accomplishments of these highly trained frontline professionals, Therefore, be it resolved that the Board of Franklin County Commissioners of Franklin County, Kansas does hereby proclaim May 17th through May 23rd, 2020 as Emergency Medical Services Week with the theme, Ready Today, Preparing for Tomorrow, and encourage the citizens to and communities of Franklin County to honor our responders this week. All right. And uh, we would need to vote on this. this is Someone uh, like to uh, make a motion to pass the proclamation for Emergency Medical Services Week. Commissioner Howard, I'll make the motion. All right, Commissioner Howard made the motion. I uh, heard somebody try to jump in for a second. Uh, Commissioner Dunn, second. All right. Commissioner Stottlemyre, how do you vote? Yes. Commissioner Howard? Yes. Commissioner Dickinson? Yes. Commissioner Dunn? Yes. Chair Waymeyer? Yes. We're lucky to have the ambulance department we have. It was just a few years ago. They won their award for being best in the state, and I think they've only gotten better since, but they must uh, they must want to give some other communities a chance at the award. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but uh, we're, lucky to, we're lucky to have them, and um, I really do believe we have one of the best in the state, and what a what an important thing to be good at, too. So uh, we appreciate those folks. So move down to our consent agenda today would include uh, meetings from our 
Uh, let's see. We're considering our minutes from our May 13th meeting, we have tax change orders in the amount of a negative $38.26 and claim vouchers in the amount of $561,719.71. Is there a motion to approve the consent agenda? This is Don. Motion approved. All right. Is there a second? This is Ian. I'll second it. Commissioner Howard, how do you vote? Yes. Commissioner Dickinson? Yes. Commissioner Dunn? Yes. Commissioner Stottlemyre? Yes. Chair Waymeyer? Yes. Our first item of business is consider extending our uh, emergency disaster declaration for a period of 60 days. Is Alan on? Yes, I am. Go ahead, Alan. Hey, this is Alan Radcliffe. Um, as you know, we've been under a declaration of disaster since March 14th. And uh, there, a couple weeks ago, I uh, talked with you about the state having uh, executive orders that said we were good till the 31st. Well, last week after our commission meeting, there was some additional guidance from the state that came down that recommended be, that we continue to do our own local uh, declaration uh, so that this would also allow us to continue the uh, FEMA disaster assistance uh, for recouping any cost at 75 percent for any of our approved cost for FEMA and then also allows us to continue as the state opens up and we have more uh, authorities given back to us on our at the county level uh, if we need to make any uh, adjustments or any uh, resolutions or public health emergencies, we have that uh, authority under the disaster declaration to be able to do that. On Friday, uh, Vice Chair Dickinson signed the seven-day emergency disaster declaration, and then uh, it, this would extend that declaration for another 60 days. All right. Any questions for Alan? Someone like to make a motion to extend the emergency uh, disaster declaration for 60 days. This is Don. Motion to approve. All right. Mr. Don, second. All right. Commissioner Dickinson, how do you vote? Yes. Commissioner Dunn? Yes. Commissioner Stottlemyre? Yes. Commissioner Howard? Yes. Chair Waymeyer? Yes. All right. Our second item of business is to consider approval uh, to uh, authorize the application for community development block grant funds from the Kansas Department of Commerce. Uh, Derek, do you want to start with this? Yeah, I'll introduce it. And we've also got Paul Bean on the call who we've been working with on this. Um, so the state of Kansas has a program and it actually derives from the federal government's CARES Act that they passed kind of at the start of this pandemic. Uh, but it's a community development block grant program and cities and counties can apply for these funds and then distribute them to help support local businesses that are in need. Um, each municipality can apply for a max of $300,000 um, at the state level or av they're available on a first come first serve basis. So we're trying to get through the process as quickly as possible. Um, there are myriad documents that need signed. I think at the commission level, uh, the pertinent document is the resolution that we have in front of you today. And then there are a number of other documents that I would just recommend that the board give Chair Waymeyer the authority to sign unilaterally. Uh, I don't think the other documents require um, necessarily require passing by the board, just the chief elected official, which in this instance would be Colt. So 
Paul, do you want to talk a little bit more about the program? Sure, I'd be glad to. Can everybody hear me okay? Yeah, yeah go ahead, Paul. Um, good morning, commissioners. Um, this is uh, about a little over $9 million that the state has received from the federal government. Uh, as Derek outlined, we can apply as a county for up to 300000 which is the max. Uh, this program is targeted for small business. So you have two subset programs. One's called a micro grant, and that's for businesses of five people or fewer. And then you have what's called an economic development grant, which is for businesses of six to 50 employees. So this uh, is a program that's really designed to help the small business and the farmers uh, are eligible for this. So it's important to our ag friends. Um, the requirement is that majority of the jobs per business need to be within the, the guidelines of what is called the low uh, LMI, low to moderate income level. And half of the jobs, over half of the jobs that you that are identified being saved by this need to be in that in that category. What that means in dollar and cents is the LMI is configured by household income. So if we have uh, individuals with household income below thirty nine thousand three hundred um, as as a single in, in, in single household, then they would qualify as an LMI recipient. Uh, it goes up to, uh, for example, a four-person household. It can be as high as fifty-six thousand one hundred uh, for that household for the person from that home to uh, meet that requirement. So it is targeted for those that are really being hit the hardest by this. Uh, I think it's important for you all to know. Since March twenty-fourth, uh, Franklin County has had one thousand eight hundred and fifty-five new unemployment claims out of a total employment job pool of around 9,100. So we've been hit pretty significantly and predominantly it's in this small business and low to moderate income uh, population that's being impacted. So this is directed to them. Have you been up there? Oh, that's where I was going to go. Have you got a plan we, we would, um, the way this would work is if we are approved, we will work out a, uh, a program as far as receiving the applications, which um, Derek and I would work through, but uh, most likely would funnel through me. All of these loans, or not loans, grants, I'm sorry, would need to be approved by you, the commission. So we would review these, bring them to you uh, for your final approval. That is a requirement uh, within the grant infrastructure. We would be contracting with Susan Gilmore out of Southeast Kansas Regional Planning Commission. Uh, you can, you, you have to contract with somebody to manage uh, the, the paperwork and such, that's a requirement. They can charge up to 10% of the total grant, not to exceed 15,000. Uh, so their fee is $15,000 if we were to get the, the full grant of 300,000. That would be paid out of the grant proceeds so we would have a remainder of 285,000 to award to citizens in Franklin County. We are doing this in coordination with the city of Ottawa. So the city of Ottawa is applying for 300,000 uh, that would be for the purpose of businesses within the city limits of Ottawa. This grant for the county would be excluding the city limits of Ottawa and everywhere else in the county. So all the other municipalities and the rural areas would be uh, eligible to apply for this grant. I'm happy to answer further questions if you've got some. This is Commissioner Dickinson. I have a question. You, how much is t is the total that's available? Two hundred eighty-five thousand after after we no, pay but for. No, I mean, but it, for everybody that they have to to split out. Oh, it's a it's a little over nine million that that uh, is available. So if we're requesting three hundred thousand and the city of Ottawa is requesting three hundred thousand, uh, that's a big chunk of the whole thing. I mean, it, and so what are they going to are they so like if 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 we're first in line and we take our three hundred thousand and the next eight people or whatever ten people do three hundred thousand and it's all gone, that means nobody else after that would get yeah, any or. Worse. It's first come, first serve, but it's also going to be, uh, I think most people are going to be 
looking, well, what they will look at is the population served and they'll reallocate or adjust downward off of that. So not everybody's going to get 300,000. We may not get so, 300,000. So we can request 300,000, but they can change that amount. Yes, yes. Okay. But it is, you are, you are absolutely right. It is very important that we get in line uh, because uh, it is first come, first serve. And that's why we move forward with uh, public hearing notice for Friday, because we cannot make application until after the public hearing. So what we will do is gather, we've got the application written, We're, we'll have the documents if you all authorize that today. And so we will have everything ready, subject to any changes uh, from you or citizens that speak at the public notice, public hearing. As soon as that's over, we would hit submit, so we would be in line. And the and the city is on the same timeline. They're going to have a public hearing on Friday as well. This is Commissioner Dickinson again. I did see that the city was having their public hearing on Friday, but I also wanted to, to say thank you to Paul Bean for taking this kind of a mantle upon himself. Um, I knew that the city was making, doing what they needed to do to make this available to the people inside the city of Ottawa. And I appreciate your work to um, possibly have funds available for people outside the city of Ottawa in Franklin County. So thank you very much. Thank you, It's it's been my pleasure. I, I'm hoping we get the money. I got one question, this is Commissioner Dunn. Uh, does this mean that the commission needs to meet on Friday to to approve or to have the open meeting and approve this? This is Derek. We have to have a special meeting on Friday. Yes, um, <clears throat> not to approve this per se. It's because we have to hold a public hearing to give the public the opportunity to comment on this. Paul and I have spoken this, uh, we don't really understand this particular requirement because I, I don't, I mean, nobody in the community should have an issue with this at all. This, this is grant money. It's not a loan. Um, there's nothing controversial here at all. Nevertheless, it is a requirement. The reason we're doing that Friday is that is the first possible day we can do it because we had to wait five days after giving uh, publication notice and, and we want to do it ASAP because there's only nine million dollars to go around. So we want to try to be at the top of that line. And so we will have a very brief special meeting Friday uh, morning at 830. Okay, thank you. Yeah, this is Commissioner Weimar. Uh, we'll here in a second look for a, a motion to approve the resolution um, and then authorizing me to sign the other pertinent documents. Just so you guys know, since you would, um, I guess, be giving your consent for me to sign them, there's a, I mean, the ones that are in front of me right now are disclosure uh, report uh, statement saying that we'll follow that lists a lot of federal uh, guidelines, and then one saying that we'll uh, follow the uh, HUD Act of 1974 specifically, in addition to the resolution. So, so you're aware of what else you're giving me consent to sign. Uh, with that, I'd look for a motion to approve the resolution authorizing the application for community development block grant funds from the Kansas Department of Commerce, and uh, authorizing the chairman to sign. Uh, pertinent documents related to the application. Uh, Commissioner Mr. Howard, I'll make the motion. It looks like Commissioner Howard got the motion. I think I heard Roy. Yeah, second. All right. Commissioner Dunn, how do you vote? Yes. Mr. Stottlemyre? Yes. Commissioner Howard? Yes. Commissioner Dickinson? Yes. Chair Waymeyer? Yes. All right. Let's move on to staff reports. First up, we have Derek Brown. Yeah, I sent the five of you an email uh, pretty late last night, just giving you an update on uh, the most recent action out of the governor's office. So <clears throat> let me start back. Uh, 
as of last Thursday. So after last week's meeting, the next day on Thursday, it was the 14th, we were made aware uh, at the same time the general public was, mind you, of a phase 1.5 that was to go into effect uh, this Monday on 518, this past Monday. Uh, phase 1.5, as I explained to each of you, really kind of was a true 1.5. It wasn't, didn't, uh, wasn't as liberal as the governor's original phase two, but it did allow uh, salons and barber shops and other parlors to open up with restrictions. It allowed gyms and fitness centers to open up with certain restrictions, but there wasn't a whole lot else in that. Now, originally, the plan was to talk through that in a little more detail. Um, it wasn't going to be our recommendation that we add any restrictions to that. Um, but then yesterday, we were again unexpectedly made aware, and at the same time, the general public was made aware of an amended phase two, which goes into effect uh, this Friday. And so. <clears throat> I sent you the actual executive order last night that implements this as well as an FAQ. This does go further, obviously, than 1.5. Just to touch on a few highlights, uh, mass gatherings, the number is now up to 15 or fewer. That is a change from the governor's original phase two in which I believe she had that number at 30. Uh, but currently, as of this Friday, the number is going to be 15. Um, again, nail salons, barber shops, hair salons, the various salons are all allowed to remain open now, but still only for appointments and online check-in. Uh, gyms and fitness centers are open. The change for them moving into this new phase two is that in-person classes will now be allowed, which was a change from 1.5, um, but those classes can't have any more than 15 people in them. Indoor leisure spaces, so movie theaters, bowling alleys can now open in phase two, um, provided that they meet the necessary social distancing restrictions. Um, casinos, which doesn't really apply to Franklin County, um, but they can open now. I think an important one is organized sports and organized sports facilities can now open up. So Orlis Cox and uh, presumably, you know, I've not looked at the specific guidelines laid out on the Kansas uh, Recreation and Park Association, but I'm assuming this will provide for baseball, but certainly we'll check into that. But organized sports are now allowed. And then graduations are allowed as well, but they still have to stay under that mass gathering number of 15 or fewer. Um, this has been a... <clears throat> I mean, this entire pandemic has been wrought with pretty rapid changes, but the last week in particular, it's been uh, hard for us at the local government level to stay on top of everything that the state is doing. Um, you know, I'm the type of person, I assume that there is good reasoning and rationale for it, but unfortunately that hasn't been made available to us. So I don't know, uh, exactly what the reason for all this change is, but I, I, I don't believe that when phase 1.5 was introduced last Thursday, I don't believe, I can't believe that it was the state's intention to turn around, you know, four days, five days later and introduce an amended and expedited phase two. Nevertheless, here we are. And so, uh, before I transition into what this means for county facilities and county operations, do any of you have any questions about this? Doesn't sound like it. 
Okay. And as I said in my email last night, that FAQ put out by the governor's office really does a pretty good job of explaining where we're at, what has changed since 1.5. I will certainly have Casey make sure that we get that put out multiple times on our website, social media, so that the public has access to that. Regarding county buildings, um, it's, uh, you know, at the staff level when we've talked about this, and we've discussed it at the board level, we've kind of thought all along that phase two would be when we opened our buildings back up to the public. Uh, the, the one in particular that I think has a lot of interest is the old courthouse, because obviously you've got motor vehicle, uh, the treasurer's office, you've got Janet's office there, and so yesterday we got the team. Is there any reason at the local level? Um, and we asked several questions. Is there any reason at the local level to impose additional restrictions um, on this amended phase two? Because we still have the ability to do that. And, and none of us felt like we have the rationale or the data here in Franklin County to do that. And so with that in mind, we asked, okay, is there a reason why we shouldn't open our buildings to the public? And again, at this juncture, uh, we don't feel like we have, we don't have an onslaught of positive tests. I mean, there's nothing at this time that would indicate that as other businesses around us continue to open that we leave our business closed. And so my recommendation to the board is gonna be that we go ahead and, and open the old courthouse back up. Um, I'm gonna pause for a second. Uh, our call yesterday, I and Janet was on the call and, and I told her it's not my job, nor is it the Board of Commissioners, to tell elected officials um, that they have to open their office or, or how they need to run their office. And I sense that there might be some disagreement between the elected officials in the courthouse in terms of when the offices get open. I think we should open the doors of the courthouse, but again, it's not really in our, we don't have the authority to tell Jody, for example, that she has to open her office. But Janet had indicated she was going to try to reach out to the two of them. And did you have opportunity to discuss this with Jody and Sue? And if so, how did that discussion go? Yes, yeah, so I did discuss this um, with Jody and Sue, and they both have their own um, special concerns in regards to this because they deal with the public a, um, a fair amount. So um, Jody has indicated that she is um, supportive of, of opening the courthouse, although she does want to implement some um, special procedures, um, at least for a little while. You know, obviously opening the courthouse for motor vehicle traffic when we have not been open for a substantial amount of time, he would like to implement some procedures for making sure that we don't have uh, a major influx of people in that area all at one time. So she's going to be setting up a scheduling process so that citizens can schedule a time to come in for motor vehicle because we cannot have them all setting out in the hall like we normally would where they're all shoulder to shoulder. We need to still maintain our social distancing practice and so they know what time they can come and have an estimate of when they're going to be seen. She wants to still encourage everyone to pay their taxes, uh, whether that's motor vehicle or property taxes, um, via the online system or through a uh, check in our payment box out front. And they're still going to be available to answer phone calls uh, to give people their tax amounts and help them out so that they don't have to come in. Um, it's really been working really well to give people the information over the phone. And she said, really, the only people 
she foresees needing to see in person in motor vehicle are people who have purchased a new vehicle and have a title that they need to process and get a new plate. Um, Sue does have some additional challenges in her office because largely the work that's done out of her office in person is using public books that are of historic value that have years and years of, of information in them and there is no way to sanitize those books because you're spraying some sanitizer on a, a historic document that could potentially ruin it. And so she's going to be working with Casey today to set up some guidelines um, and send out some information to her title companies and stuff to still try to limit the people who are coming into her office for a while. I can personally vouch for the fact that there's any given time there's two or three or four people in the vault looking up information and we just can't do that right now. That is not proper social distancing requirements. So we're going to work on some ways that she can still try to limit the number of people. As far as my office goes, um, we have our partitions up um, to uh, separate us from the, from the public as they're coming in, but still be able to help them in a safe manner. Um, all the offices have their plexiglass shields up and we all have masks. So we're going to be what we can, but we are going to be posting some um, guidelines on the doors that for those two offices that we really have concerns with about uh, influx. So. Okay. Thanks, Janet. Um, and she makes a, a very good point. I, I'm not sure we were prepared for phase two, or, or let me walk that back. We weren't expecting phase two to be implemented so quickly, but we are prepared for it. Um, as she said, we, we have all of our plexiglass shields up, we've got masks ready, um, we're ready for the public generally to come back into the courthouse. We've been prepared for this. And so um, I don't have any concerns there. Um, again, it'll be my recommendation to the board that we go ahead and open our offices um, to the public effective next Tuesday. Um, next Monday, as you know, is a holiday. And so um, with your blessing, we will go ahead and start putting out communication today uh, that we are going to open to the public on the 26th with certain protocols in place that we will continue to iron out with Jody and Sue. Uh, do any of the five of you have any concerns with this portion of that? Uh, this is Commissioner Dunn. Uh, I just, I just wondered about uh, requiring masks for the public, masks for the public traffic as a requirement to be in a courthouse. We don't currently have that as a requirement. Um, it's a discussion that we can certainly have. We, we are encouraging the use of masks. We will have masks available for them to use. And certainly it's my expectation that uh, the staff, county staff are wearing masks. And so uh, I think it will certainly be an environment conducive to wearing masks, but it is not at this juncture a literal requirement. This okay. is Commissioner Dickinson. I have a question about, um, so when this all came down, I think that the order was that if you uh, had to renew your driver's license or your car tags, it would be a 60 day extension from, so will the 60 day extension start uh, from Tuesday that you would have a 60 day time frame to, with, if yours fell within that time when we were shut down? Is that how you're reading this? Um. I don't believe so. Um, I, I want to say it's 60 days from May 1. 
They have 60 days from May 1 to... That is like, my belief. I mean, like you mine get... was due the end of April, but I couldn't get in there and I do need to get in there. Um, so um, anyway, so you're you're thinking the 60 days from May 1st. I mean, it'll, we get it out to the public, so at least they know what to expect or what is expected of them. Yeah, we will get that clarified to the public this afternoon on social media, but it's my belief that it is 60 days from A1. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, anyone else have questions for Derek on uh, or comments, concerns on reopening our facilities? Comment about this. So our phone lines have been open till six o'clock at the courthouse and it was a discussion between Jody and I, the treasurer yesterday, that we will continue at least for a while being open till six, having our phone lines open and um, making some appointments and stuff up until six o'clock so that we can accommodate more people. Um, Obviously, with being able to have less people in the building at a time, we wanted to have more time open to be able to accommodate more people. So we are still going to continue to be open until 6 o'clock to be able to accommodate as many people in a day as we can. Okay. Okay. Um, the, the next... Um, well, I guess the next comment that I will make, and this isn't something I'm I'm seeking board approval on, it's more just for your information. Um, I have uh, certain staff, and they're primarily support staff that are currently working from home, um, and I'm thinking primarily of my uh, certain employees in human resources, as well as certain employees in IT. Um, at this juncture, it's my intention to continue having them work from home. Um, and speaking with uh, Sari and Dustin, uh, the two directors over those departments, they tell me that it's working incredibly well, that their employees are happy with the arrangement, and I, I see no reason to change at this point. COVID isn't gone. I mean, the, the rationale that we have talked about throughout this about not having all of your employees in the same spot at one time um, to protect them all from being potentially quarantined, that is still very much a valid rationale. And I, I see no reason to change that when our services, particularly in those two departments, are not hurting at all. Again, um, I can talk with elected officials and, and I can make recommendations, but I, I don't have the authority nor do the commissioners to mandate that the elected officials platoon their staff or or how to allocate their staff in any way, but I will continue having those discussions with them. I think the final thing uh, in terms of county operations that I want to discuss with the board are our meetings. And, and I mentioned this last night. Um, again, at this juncture, this, with the exception of, as Colt pointed out, the awkward pledges of allegiance, um, it seems to be running incredibly well. Like, I, I don't feel like we're having issues getting business done. So my natural inclination is to recommend that we continue doing this uh, via Zoom and then we reassess again uh, come phase three, whenever that is. It's currently slated for June 8th. But as I said in my email to you last night, these dates are absolutely meaningless this point. Um, not a single one of them has held. And so uh, Lord only knows when that date will actually be. But if the current trends hold, it's probably going to be before June 8th. And so uh, seeking feedback from the board, um, and I would start with Chair Waymeyer because this is historically a decision that the chair makes. Um, though I'm sure he'll want, you know, he'll want to hear opinions from all of you, but Colt, what are your thoughts on this? Oh, I, 
I really just want to hear from everybody else and, and kind of come to a consensus. I, let's uh, start going down the line. Uh, Commissioner Stottlemyer, what are your thoughts? Uh, I'm ready to get back in the office, but I know the importance of how things are right now. So I'm open to at least one more week and see what uh, conspires. All right. Uh, Commissioner Dickinson? I agree. I think this is kind of a fluid situation, and, and I mean, it can be a week by week, but you have four commissioners that are in in the groups that you don't want them to be, you know, exposed. So I think that the, as the county opens, we're going to have an increase. So at this point, probably it's a good idea to stay with the Zoom meetings. All right. Commissioner Dunn? Uh, I'm fine the way it's going. Um, uh, area agency on aging is going to try an in-person uh, meeting on the 29th of May uh, with just the policy board, which is be well within the uh, limits of the, uh, you know, the 15 getting together. So uh, we're going to try it next Friday. Which All Friday, right. But have to find the way we're doing it now. Okay. Commissioner Howard? Yeah, I think we need to stay with what we're doing. Um, I saw here a couple of days ago that uh, three states that are, have their cases and hospitalizations and everything else, um, their death tolls are rising. Um, the three states that are rising the quickest were three states that opened early and pretty much without too many limitations. So I think that's kind of proof that uh, we still got to maintain what we're doing and not uh, open too early. Um, just a comment on the governor. I was impressed when they went to the 1.5. I liked what they did there. Um, I thought that going to phase two may be a little early, and I feel like it may be because of pressure that the governor's office have been getting too open, but I'm happy with what we're doing. I think we need to maintain for a while. All right. Well, um, not just us, but community wise, regardless of the guidelines or directives put out by anyone, it's ultimately going to come down to personal decisions and personal risk. You know, if you're in a high risk category, um, it may be best for you just to stay home. Uh, and that's a personal decision you're going to have to make for yourself. So with that in mind, um, let's finish out the month of uh, May. So one more meeting, we'll, we'll stay just entirely uh, with the, the Zoom meetings like we've been doing. Come June, if you want to come sit in the chambers, uh, if you, you're you know, more than welcome. Um, and if you you're more comfortable on Zoom, uh, we can dial you in and the rest of the commissioners can be in here like I am. Um, there's no shame in that. Uh, there's entirely personal choice and be more than happy to accommodate you. So um, we're still set up with uh, distancing. Uh, our our seats are, are spread apart here in the chambers. So um, but let's do one more meeting entirely by phone and then uh, come June if you want to come on in, come in and uh, I guess the only thing would be to maybe let us know beforehand which one you prefer so that uh, Dustin can get set up if you want to call in. And uh, we know that works fine too. So uh, does that sound, anybody object to that? This is no, Commissioner, this is Commissioner uh, Dickinson who gives me one more week to get a haircut. So that's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> All right. You can get your hair did. Uh, Commissioner Stottlemyre? No, I just have no no problems. I just gonna ask Derek a question. When do you think we're gonna start talking budget? Yeah, so <clears throat> we Janet and I have been working on the budget. Um admittedly we haven't sat down and, and worked on it together at this point, but um we're in a great spot with it, Don. Um Part of the reason for that is this this is not going to be, um, at least relatively speaking, a very difficult budget year because of this pandemic. Um, we've asked all of our department heads and elected officials to largely stay flat, and to their immense credit, they've, they've done that. Um, and it's prudent 
because we still don't know what effect that this pandemic is going to have on us. We second half tax payments were due this month, but um, there was legislation to try and get that extended. It's just everything is so in flux right now that uh, we don't know what the ramifications are going to be for four counties in particular. Uh, Janet, do you have, um, I don't have the budget calendar in front of me. Do you have thoughts on when you want to try and sit down, quote unquote, sit down with the board, whatever that might look like? So we have generally sat down in the beginning of June. Um, so I, I believe we were planning for the week of the 8th, which if the, if the current track holes that will be when we would start phase three so i mean that still seems like maybe that might be an appropriate time to have the discussions um our auditor uh, sent me an email this morning and said he's finishing up uh, our official audit report right now he was cleaning up a few loose ends over the last week and we've been emailing quite a bit the last week so he is finishing and then I'll have that report hopefully very soon and be able to get those audited numbers into our into our spreadsheet so you guys have an accurate picture of what that looks like and we can make any final tweaks. But I've been meeting with the department heads and talking to them about their budget. As Derek said, we've asked them to remain flat. So any changes that they have are strictly between lines and the bottom line would still be the same. And personnel change, personnel um, increases, that's, that's it. We've um, said no new positions. And so there's no real, real change there. So I, I think that we could still potentially be ready in early June to do that. Again, we still have 10 days of this month and the first week of June roughly. So um, I think if that's all right with you guys, then Derek and I can firm up the calendar and let you know. Um, but the budget binders are almost finished and ready to go for whenever you guys want to have a meeting. I am also open to if if you don't want to meet in person, but you want to have Zoom meetings, we can certainly do that too. So I can just get your budget binders to you and then we can, we don't have to meet in person if you guys still, if you feel uncomfortable about that. Like I am said, this is a really fluid situation and we want to make sure that everybody is comfortable with the situation and asking our department heads to stay largely unchanged for their budget this year with anticipation that we don't know what is going to happen. I think that there won't really be much to talk about for um, what we're planning for next year's budget because it will look largely the same as we did this year. Thank you. All right. Anything Mr. else? Mr. Oh, go ahead, Roy. I have a question for uh, Derek. Uh, what about our other offices, like uh, specifically Knox to Sweep? Uh, farmers are looking to do stuff with chemicals here at any time, and I don't know if that was partially open, and, and Public Works, and the Visitor Center, and those other facilities. Yeah, so I am going to recommend um, generally opening county offices back up. I know I just spoke with David about this yesterday, actually. Um, there was special concern in noxious weed because there, there literally is not any kind of barrier there. And if you walk in, you can picture what I'm talking about. And he's been working with one of our vendors and in fact, I just gave him permission yesterday to move forward with, um, he's finally found uh, some type of partition that's going to work. And, and so we're moving forward on that. Um, and so, yeah, it, it's our intention to get noxious weed open back up as soon as we can, um, because we have had a couple of inquiries from 
farmers, though, in talking with David, one of the things that he wants to make sure that we we let people know is that there's nothing that you can get from Franklin County that you can't go to co-op and also get, or even like in Orshalins. And so um, if there are urgent needs in this interim period, then certainly the individuals would still have options, but we are working to uh, get noxious weed open as soon as we can. We just want to make sure we have measures in place for the protection of our staff but we we should be good to go there soon and i will will certainly make that announcement public once we're ready to go um, in terms of the visitor center that that's another discussion that we're going to have but i i will tell you um i am leery of opening back up the vic at this juncture one, the nature of the clientele that come in here are people that are traveling, and there's a reason that the CDC and KDHE have implemented travel restrictions. It's because we know that this disease is transmitted, um, uh, you know, a lot of cases are transmitted through traveling. Further, when you consider that this place is staffed by volunteers, I believe every single one of which are part of a vulnerable population. I, I can't in good conscience recommend that we open right now um, with COVID cases still on the rise. And so um, obviously I say it all the time, I work at the pleasure of the commissioners. And if the five of you disagree with that, then certainly, um, you can let me know. I will tell you that Susan Rader, who has been our tourism coordinator, who's been officed out there, she is now um, working with the health department and, and speaking with Chief Robbins is doing an exceptional job there and has given them much needed assistance. And so uh, she's being put to work productively. I just struggle with a reason to open that building up right now. But again, um, if if a majority of you feel differently, then, then we would take your direction. But that's really the one building that I, I don't see opening back up, at least in the near future. This is Commissioner Dickinson. And, and one more thing to consider is that many uh, of our local activities that would draw people to our community are have been canceled or may be canceled um good chance that they would be canceled so yeah i i would definitely agree with you about that building uh derek this commissioner down uh why i asked about noxious weed is because because of, of the uh spray tanks that we get are available out there to the public and uh, and that was that was the main thing. I know you can get chemicals from the other locations, but uh, it's our spray equipment that we ran out. Uh, didn't know if it's available now or not. Well, and and let me, Roy, let me speak with David about that. And and if if there are needs for those rentals right now, I'm sure that we can make accommodations for that. And so I'll speak with him. Um, if you want to refer um, interested parties to me personally, I would be happy to direct them to him. Um, just give me the opportunity to, to talk with him and we'll make arrangements. Okay, nobody's asked me yet, but uh, I, know it's com I know it's coming up pretty soon. <laughs> okay. Uh, nobody's asked me about it. I was just curious. No further uh, questions. <laughs> okay, thanks, Roy. Um, in the absence of any further questions, the last thing I would have, Colt, um, kind of come full circle here a little bit. 
as I said at the beginning of my staff report, this modified phase two is to go into effect Friday. Um, I gave you a, a pretty basic overview of what that entails. The order still allows us to implement further restrictions if there is that desire. You're going to hear from Alan and Nick. As of yesterday, uh, the team was of the opinion that there wasn't a basis for imposing additional restrictions right now. And so it's our recommendation to just, um, per the usual, just allow us to transition into this phase two and to stick with the state's plan. But do any of you have any concerns about that? Would you like to see something different or are you comfortable just um, just transitioning this Friday. It's Commissioner sure. Tottlemeyer. I don't have any problem. Commissioner Dunn, no problems. <laughs> Commissioner, Commissioner Howard, I'm okay with We're all good. All right. That's all I have, Colt. Thank you. Okay. Alan, are you on? Yes, I am. Go ahead. All right, just to uh, kind of reiterate what Derek said, uh, we are uh, going into phase two. I want to let you know that we are continuing to look forward and continuing planning, uh, not only for the response, but also opening the county offices back up. And then discussions have also started uh, with uh, public health and Nick about uh, additional uh, resources they might need as we go forward and um, it's been mentioned already so I won't dwell on it but everybody needs to understand just because we're opening up doesn't mean that uh, this COVID virus is going away. It's still here and we're still planning on uh, having uh, this, this uh, in the community through the, at least the end of the year. So we're looking forward not only two weeks, but several months out anticipating what may happen and then uh, dealing with what does happen, like uh, going to phase two with uh, us finding out about that yesterday as a surprise. So um, one thing that I do wanna do is thank everybody, uh, the County Commission, uh, Sheriff Richards, Janet, Dr. Ransom, Nick, uh, Derek, Brandon, Casey, all of uh, the team that has worked very hard the last 60 days and continues to work very hard every day, uh, and including on my staff, uh, Tom Winter, that uh, anytime we get a call, uh, we're all working on this and, and looking forward, and we're always available uh, when we do need to uh, take action or have some discussions and I just want to thank everybody for that. Uh, things have gone pretty smooth up to this point and I would anticipate that they continue to do that. Um, with that I want to move in just let you know real quick that uh, our radio system uh, June the state is starting a uh, update of software which uh, we pay a yearly maintenance fee. So all of that is covered for us. We don't anticipate any uh, cost for this upgrade or update. If they have to replace any equipment, it's already covered. Um, shouldn't be any interruptions uh, in our system or anything. So that's gonna start next month. And then uh, also this fall, uh, we will have to uh, reprogram all of the radios in the county, which is about 750 radios. Uh, again, this is uh, a cost that has already been paid for, for the radios to be what's called optimized to where they're working at their best capabilities. And then we're also gonna take that opportunity and reprogram every radio because there's been some changes in the last two years. Uh, I've sent, uh, Tom to uh, some Motorola training, so he's able to do that. And I just want to say that uh, by us spending uh, a little bit of money to send Tom to that Motorola training, we're going to save all of the 
entities in the county, not only our county departments, but also all of our partners that use the radio system, about thirty to fifty thousand dollars when we do this reprogramming because we won't have to pay for uh, the reprogramming to be done. Um, that's all I've got. If you've got any questions for me, Alan, this is Don. This is just kind of off the wall question. Did you ever get another vehicle? Yes, I did. Uh, we uh, the day that you guys approved the vehicle for me was the day that uh, Chrysler shut down. But by going through state contract, um, Davis Moore down in Wichita had a white vehicle that met all of our uh, uh, specs except for the color, and we got that in. And last week, I got the uh, lights installed in it. All we're waiting for is to get the graphics put on the side. So it is operational and I'm driving it now. All right, thank you. You surplus in your old one? Uh, it's going to maintenance. Okay, all right. Any other questions for Alan? Let's move down to Nick Robbins. Good morning, Commission. Um, I want to start out with uh, Thanking you for approving the proclamation for EMS week and the kind words you did say um, regarding that. We uh, strive very um, to uh, provide great EMS service and uh, emergency care to our citizens and visitors. Um, we've got great partnership with the hospital. As you know, um, the ACE accreditation for dispatch is an emergency uh, medical dispatching. So we've continued to do good things with um, our health care in the community. So I thank you for approving that. We also um, have a new employee starting at dispatch on the 21st. So that fills us back up there. Uh, so good things happening in the dispatch center. With the health department, we stay busy with tracing contacts. Last the end of last week, we tested a hundred, right around 100 people um, that had been or around contacts that were COVID positive. With that, we did have uh, all those results come back negative. So to date, we've uh, received or have gotten back 843 tests. 32 of those tests have been positive, 811 negative. We're continuing to work on testing and um, working with Dr. Ransom and Casey to promote the Wear the Mask program. Make sure that when you're out and about, you're wearing a mask. That has proven more times than not to be the most effective way besides washing your hands to keep the spread of this. Remember, when you're wearing a mask, you're protecting others from you. And with the asymptomatic cases we continue to see, that's the best way to, to keep everybody safe. So I, uh, I want to make sure that people realize that. Other than that, we are starting to open back up the health department. We are by appointment only. People stay in their vehicles. We call them in. They check in from their phone. Uh, we are doing more vaccines. We are doing the family planning clinic. So that is getting back into the normal swing. As Derek referenced, uh, we do have Susan out in the health department now, and she has been a great asset. Uh, those employees of the health department have been a joy to work with. They're a, a great group of, uh, of employees for our team, and, and this public health emergency is really spotlighted what a good health department we have. So I want to make sure that uh, we do give that recognition out there. With that, I, I don't have a whole lot more to talk about. We will continue to do uh, tracking if we do have positive cases and look at what testing and uh, the, the future is bringing for that. So if you don't have any questions, that, that's what I got for you. This is Commissioner Dickinson. I have a question for you. I know we have been uh, adding additional responsibility on your plate. I just want to make sure that you're doing fine. Are you finding time to sleep? Um, uh, you have to be a good delegator, I guess, uh, in your position, but uh, have we put too much on you at this time? 
We're doing all right right now. I will tell you the departments that I have under me are doing great. Christy Hilliker is doing a good job stepping up in the EMS, Sarah Pefley in dispatch, and the health department has pulled together. We, uh, we're doing fine. I'm, I'm hanging in there doing good, and I appreciate your guys' support and allowing me to step into these roles. Uh, this commissioner down, uh, Nick, how, uh, the 32, how many have re recovered? I believe as of yesterday, 17 had recovered uh, from it. So, and right now we have nobody in the hospital from this. Everybody's at home recovering, and I believe half of those have been asymptomatic that are still positive. Okay, thanks. All right, hearing no other questions. Thank you, Nick. Hearing no other questions, we'll go on to Sheriff Richards. Are you on, Jeff? Yes, I am. Thank you. Um, good morning. And uh, I also wanted to say thank you for the uh, proclamation for Police Week and Peace Officer Memorial Day that you, uh, that you guys approved last week. Um, I was out at a law enforcement funeral at that, at that same time. So um, that meant that that proclamation meant quite a bit more to us uh, this year than it may of other times because of that. And I just wanted to say thank you for that. Um, also on the reopening um, at our meeting yesterday, we discussed uh, what that means for all of our operations. As you know, I have staff um, over at the district court building. Um, we don't really know what that looks like yet. And I do have a meeting um, scheduled this afternoon with the district court judges. And so um, when we find out what that's going to look like at that point, then I'll make sure that uh, Derek and anyone else that needs to know that information has that um, so that we can, so that we kind of all know what we're doing together uh, moving forward. So other than that, um, I guess uh, Monday we did have a, uh, a new uh, deputy that started with us, uh, Briley Rivers, um, who has been a teacher at USD 290 is a, uh, is now a Franklin County Sheriff Deputy, and uh, we're glad to have him aboard, and that that fills us up um, for the time being. So, um, if anyone has any questions, I'm happy to answer them. All right, here and done. Thanks, Jeff. We'll move Thank to you. Janet. Thanks, Chair Waymeyer. So, I just have a couple of things. I wanted to just say really quickly um, how great the staff in the courthouse has been. We're working shifts and we're, I think we're all gonna continue to work shifts, um, both to try to meet the needs of the citizens, but also to uh, maintain continuity of service so that we don't um, inadvertently affect everyone in one office and have to shut down an office. So I just like personally, I like to thank everyone in the courthouse um, for making the sacrifices they're making because this isn't easy on their home lives to try to expect people to either come in at six o'clock in the morning or stay till eight o'clock at night. So everyone in the courthouse has been really great about that. Um, and just one um, thing I want to throw out there is the filing deadline for filing for office is June 1st at noon. Um, I know both the Democratic Party and the Republican Party are working really hard to get people filed for their precinct committee people seats. Um, there's a man and a woman open for every single precinct or township um, on the ballot for Democrats and Republicans in, on the primary ballot. So that office is free to file for. Also township treasurer and township trustees are all up for election in November and it's one dollar to file for those offices so i've heard from quite a few of those but we still are waiting to see some more of those um we have um, someone filed for at least one person filed for each of our two commission seats that are open um, and we have someone filed for every one of our other county offices um, all, all the incumbents and we're just waiting for um our sheriff to officially file, but he has let me know that he is going to file. So those are all um, due by June 1st at noon. So we're making arrangements with people um, right now this week to meet them, but next week we'll be opened up and people will be able to come in between eight and six and drop off their forms. And we always have a notary there. So 
if someone needs their forms notarized, we're happy to do that for them when they're there. So if anyone has any questions about that, they can feel free to call my office anytime and we're happy to answer your questions about it. All right, thank you, Janet. This is Commissioner Dickinson. I have a question for Janet. We have received a couple of emails uh, from the um, KAC that they are asking information on what our county has, uh, are the costs that we've had because of COVID related expenses. Um, I guess the state is getting $1.25 billion and they're trying to advocate that that you know, needs to be sent out to the states that have. Um, and I did, we don't have that information. I didn't know if you did or if you've responded to that. Yeah, thanks for bringing that up, Commissioner Dickinson. Yes, yeah, so I am actively tracking all the expenses and we have set up a, a special account so we can easily track those. But in addition to tracking them as a whole, I'm also tracking what each department spent so that at each department can get that information from me. So if they need it for some reason, um, I'm also our contact person for the FEMA grant portal. So if and when we need to apply for FEMA funds to reimburse us for these expenditures, that we, that we can do that very quickly and easily. I have a meeting scheduled tomorrow with the Kansas Department of Emergency Management discuss those grant funds that are available. In regards to the KAC request, I am responding to them weekly about what our expenditures are and working closely with each one of our um, department heads that, that have impacted staff and, and are responding actively to this emergency. So that is an ongoing. And one more thing um, that I am getting a lot of correspondence from KAC on is the uh, legislative session that's supposed to happen tomorrow. So there are several bills that have either been amended in committee or have passed out of committee and are going to the floor either on the House side or the Senate side. And the tax bill, Senate Bill 294, is one of those bills that has been favorably passed out of committee on the House side. And then the Senate, the, the Senate side has amended a House bill to also include the language of that original Senate bill so that the Senate will have that on the floor in their chambers with some additions with that tax bill for COVID response. So they kind of wrap several things together. So I'm not really sure how that's going to end up looking, but um, the House side did amend the original Senate Bill 294 to not take effect until 2022 budget year. All right, any other questions for Janet? Thank you. Let's move on to commissioner's comments and board reports. Uh, Commissioner Dickinson. Um, I have several things. Um, I actually got a chance to meet with a, a, a landowner uh, last Wednesday that was having some water issues and then I met again with him and David Lee and Jeff Welton on Monday. And it was just great to be able to be there while they were having the discussion with the landowner. It helps me to understand what exactly our county's uh, position is or what our um, obligations are or are not to the, the landowners. Um, on Thursday, I did listen in to the, on the governor's Zoom con conference. Um, and where she discussed her moving to the uh, Kansas 1.5. One of the things they talked about is this uh, experimental drug, uh, the, I'm not sure if I'm saying this right, that remdesivir, remdesivir, um, that they do have, uh, they have shipments of those. It will be available for anybody, any uh, county that needs it. Um, they are not going to ship it out until you need it, but it is, I think they're kind of trying to remind us that this is not a game changer. Um, this is only giving us another option for treating people that are needing uh, more oxygen report, re, uh, oxygen re support. And then I do want to just 
just really give a shout out to our COVID-19 team. Um, I know that they have been working overtime and you know that because we're getting updates from Casey uh, well past the um, normal business hours. We get emails from Derek at midnight or last night, I think at 930. And I know at least one of those nights it was, he had been on the phone almost the whole evening uh, on a particular issue that was going on with a COVID related issue. So I just wanted to say, I just, I appreciate them. I appreciate all of you that are working and working overtime. And then I had a, a personal goal to touch base with people in my district after I had been in office um, after my first year. Well, COVID-19 has kind of put a damper on being able to go door to door. So I'm trying to reach out to people on the phone um, if there's anybody in my district that would like to discuss issues or just to visit, have any ideas or questions for the county, I would love to talk to them. Uh, my phone number is on the Franklin County website. And I would just encourage you that if you are interested in a phone call, to so please give me a call. All and right. that's it. All right, Commissioner Stottlemyer. Yeah, I hadn't been attended any meetings. We, uh, we will have a uh the lake region like i said falls weight authority will have a zoom meeting just like this on the 28th even though they've changed it to 15 people i'm sure we're going to uh continue on with that meeting uh and that is on may the 28th uh if, if you didn't get any of that information i can provide it to everybody if anybody wants to listen in I want to thank uh you know all the staff been working hard uh, you know, we don't get to see them. I kind of like to see them once in a while, but that's the way it goes, you know. It's happening. Uh, like the public works, is, I've had a couple of issues that they've helped me with in my district in the last couple of weeks. We'd like to thank David. Uh, they've done an excellent job of, of trying to do everything else plus a uh, couple of little side issues, and, and we got them resolved and very, very pleased with all of it. Uh, one other thing. Been noticing on the news, it's kind of an off, offbeat deal, but you notice all the Walmarts and Kmarts and Targets and, and all the bike stores are running out of bikes and uh, can't buy them. And so but you can imagine the influx of calls the Lake Region RCND has had. I've even got calls from people in Johnson County, Douglas County, and Shawnee County. I, uh, I'd love to help them. Our program is set up for people in our six counties here. Uh, if it gets to the to the to the deal, I'm not getting calls anymore. I may consider asking the RCND board or the Solid Waste Authority for permission if we want to help any of the others. Uh, but right now, I'm I'm doing good just to fill a, fill our orders. I did have a gentleman the other day donate ten bikes to us, and. Uh, that helps us out a lot to keep moving along, but I uh, uh, just want to tell uh, all of our staff to keep up the good work, and uh, hopefully we'll be back in there and we can see them again someday. That's it. All right. Thank you. Commissioner Howard? I haven't been to any meetings since the, our last meeting. I do have a Zoom meeting tomorrow with Prairie Paws, and uh, that'll be the first thing I've had since uh, – our last meeting so we'll see how that goes tomorrow that's all i have all right commissioner dunn yes i have a zoom meeting with my e uh e can uh, board of trustees last night and basically uh everything is going well with e can uh, just went over uh, usual business matters and uh, everything's going well and they're planning to do their summer uh, uh, lunch program, either by drive-by and picking it up or some sort of method like that. So they had to change a little bit, but it was a pretty uh, normal board. I have one thing I need to uh, ask the whole commission and Derek. Uh, this weekend is Memorial Day weekend, and I didn't know if anybody had reserved the uh, war memorial this weekend. I was going to ask Eric that, so. 
Not that I am aware of, Commissioner Dunn. Janet, are you aware of anything? Anyone reserving that? No, I'm not. Well, uh, since uh, this weekend is Memorial Day weekend, uh, in the year 2000, Congress uh, established a national moment of remembrance on Memorial Day at 3 p.m. local times. Uh, I still have the Franklin County wreath that I used over at uh, Paola when they had the Vietnam Traveling Tribute Wall. And I would like to place it at a memorial at our memorial at 3 p.m. on Monday, the 25th, to recognize uh, Franklin County's ward. Uh, Franklin County, County is the gave the ultimate sacrifice for our country. And I'd like the permission for the commissioner to use the memorial for that brief moment of uh, remembrance. And that's all I have. This is Commissioner right. Tom Wire. I'd like to make a motion to that topic. Seek to do it. All right. Uh, Commissioner Stottlemyre has made a motion to uh, uh, allow the place move a wreath and uh, to recognize the uh, moment of remembrance on Memorial Day. So we would like to second that. Commissioner Howard, I'll second it. Commissioner All right, Howard, all in favor? Go, go ahead, Janet. Commissioner Howard, how do you vote? Yes. Commissioner Dickinson? Yes. Commissioner Dunn? Yes. Commissioner Stoudemire? Yes. Your Waymeyer? Yes. All right. uh, this is Commissioner Dunn Coles. I uh, just want to remind everybody that this is uh, not a ceremony. There are not going to be speeches or anything of that. It just when the, uh, the when the bells ring at the First Baptist Church, the memorial will be placed, and that'll be it. So uh, that's uh, that's the plan. So all right, uh, well, I want to I want to thank the commissioners for allowing me to do that. We'll we'll know that uh, we're not going through Memorial Day without uh, remembrance, and uh, we appreciate you for that. So, um, I have nothing to report. Um, I would just say that as we do go back in in June, you know, uh, I talk as I mentioned to commissioners a willingness to accommodate if you wish to appear via uh, phone, and not in person. Um, that that invitation would extend to uh, staff and public and vendors, um, you know, personal, uh, your personal choice to stay uh, safe is going to be based on, you know, what's right for you and nobody knows better than you do what's right for you or maybe you have a high risk person in your home or uh, whatever your beliefs are, it's, it's not my business and uh, we are willing to accommodate. Uh, again, if uh, that's how you wish to appear in our meetings uh, uh, or participate in our meetings, just uh, uh, ask that you be considerate and uh, give us give us notice so we can we can accommodate because we're happy to accommodate. So I don't have anything else. Anyone else have anything they want to add? Uh, this is Commissioner Howard. On that topic you were just talking about, um, I feel it, it probably wouldn't hurt whether to uh, maybe run that by Dr. Ranson to see his thoughts on uh, on that too. If uh, going back is what he thinks uh, would be appropriate or whether he feels we should uh, stay out a little longer being he's our health uh, official. Well, he uh, looks at, reviews the uh, recommendations that come down from the state. Um, usually our staff has a meeting once uh, they find out what those are gonna be, which is a lot of times last, last minute and um, you know, uh, at that point, he looks at the recommendations as far as group size and says, you know, I think this is appropriate or not. And he has a chance to uh, object and uh, uh, decide if he wants to put more um, uh, limitations on that. And um, so far, he has not. And um, Derek, has he had a chance to look at this latest phase, the full phase two? He wasn't on our call yesterday um, and speaking with Nick. Um, 
Nick indicated he didn't have any problem with transitioning into phase two now. Uh, regarding what Commissioner Howard has asked specifically about meeting, having board meetings in person, I, I do not believe that has been discussed specifically with Dr. Uh, no. But as far as the group size and the kind of where it would fit in uh, within recommendations, I mean, that, that is, we can look that up as far as, and it fits within phase, phase two, doesn't it? Sure, it does, yeah. Yeah. So. Phase two also, this is Commissioner Dickinson, phase two also, though, still recommends people that are um, susceptible to the disease to, to you know, remain cautious. Um, anyway, part of it. Well, it is ultimately a recommendation in your personal choice. And again, you know better what's best for you than anyone else. And uh, it's entirely possible that... Uh, abundance of caution is right for you. So I'll leave that up to folks. Um, and we are happy to accommodate. That's the important thing. So, is there a motion to adjourn? This is Don. Motion to adjourn. Is there a second? Commissioner Howard, second. Commissioner, Commissioner Howard, second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? We're adjourned. <laughs>